Happy Wednesday, happy 9-9, beautiful souls. It is me, Shamama Hunting Owl, here with Journey, as you can see in the corner of the screen. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video here for you guys, and this video is gonna be a little different. Um, I'm gonna share some of my personal story about what's been going on, um, and the challenges that I have been working on within myself and on my journey as well as some messages and, and just some things that I've been processing and putting together. And I hope you guys will find this helpful and useful for your journeys. Um, so for the last several months, I have been feeling, you know, very blocked, very stuck, very stagnant in my energies. Um, I honestly, you know, and this is why I haven't done a video here for you guys really is because I really haven't felt like I've had a whole lot to say. I've been, you know, doing my process, doing my journey, and kind of just feeling really just, um, <laughs> you know, my favorite saying for the past few months has been like hashtag over it. Um, and that I really have been just wanting a new experience, needing a complete and total reboot, a new, a change in my, in the journey, in what I'm teaching and what I'm doing. And I've kind of talked about this a little bit in some of the past videos where I, you know, really haven't felt this deep connection to sharing any more information about the Twin Flame journey and my process with all of that. Um, you know, honestly, I've been doing videos about the Twin Flame journey now for, what, four or five years, and all the information is out there. You know, it's all here on the channel for you guys to go back to. And... And in reflecting and really figuring out over the last few months, like, what is my purpose now? What is my mission? You know, yes, I'm a healer. Yes, I, you know, a healing facilitator. I won't even call myself a healer because healing is done for yourself. You do the healing, you know, healers just facilitate that for you. Um, and, you know, so where am I going? What am I supposed to be doing? And, and where is it that I am blocking myself? And so it's been crazy because lots and lots of fears have been coming up, even about just doing videos again for you guys. All of this insecurity of, well, what am I gonna say? And is it gonna make sense? And, and um, you know, are people going to continue to accept that we're moving in a new direction on our journeys? So about a couple weeks ago, I did a video, maybe a week or two ago on Patreon, um, talking about how I really am not feeling this deep connection to the quote unquote twin flame journey, but that I was kind of stepping outside of that and now strictly focusing on my spiritual journey, detaching from that whole, you know, twin flame part of the journey. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm you know, denouncing that I'm a twin. I'm a twin. I will always be a twin flame. Um, and I know that that is still a significant part, part is the key word, of what I am here for and what we are all here for. And so, you know, how and what does this look like going forward with messages, with teachings, with helping facilitate for people what is my role? What is my leadership role in this? And where is where are my energies best focused and utilized to help as many people as I possibly can? And you know, and I've been struggling with this now for a while. And so a couple of weeks ago, like I said on Patreon, I, I kind of came out and and you know said, look. You know, part of what we're going through, you know, we had our have had our twin flame experience. And yes, we are still very, very deeply connected with our beloved. And that will never change. That will never go away. That is part of our divine blueprint of who we are and what we were are here to do. But that's never been the essence. That has never been the most important part. But for so long, the journey, the twin flame part of the journey has taken up, speaking of journey, he's moving the camera, has taken up so much of our energy, of our focus, of our concentration. And I feel like now we're at a place where we understand what the fuck's going on. 
we know the triggers, the purges, all of these things that are happening for us. And we have to surrender our twin flame experience to the hands of the universe, to faith, to God, to source, whoever it is, you know, to your own higher self. As we know, we are, we are the divine ex, uh, extension of God, of our higher power, of our higher selves. We are one in the same. And it's been all about, you know, being activated by our twins to come into this place of understanding that this is what has activated and facilitated our healing, our journey. But now it is time for us to truly focus on the bigger part of this, which is our own twin flame, our, our own spiritual path. You know, we have control over only one thing, and that is ourselves. And we cannot control or force any part of any other person's process or journey. There is no, you know, yes, the divine feminine holds the sacred container, and yes, the divine feminine heals things first, allowing the masculine to come into that energy to be able to look and reflect at their own, you know, processes and journeys and healing. But that is, but, but with that, with that understanding, you know, I know for myself, I was always looking at what am I doing wrong? What am I missing? How am I blocking my union, my, my, my beloved? You know, a lot of the responsibility I was taking on as a flaw or a deficit that I had in and of myself for not being in union. And as we know, that's a bunch of bullshit at this point, okay? We all have our own paths, our own processes to go through, our own lessons and karmic cycles to clear and heal. So, so everything that I am trying to focus on now, and yes, and I want you to remember, it always does include our beloved, okay? So I'm not, again, I'm not discounting that at all. I'm not rejecting any part of that process. But what I am saying is that now it is time for us to accept full and complete responsibility for ourselves, for our missions, regardless of what our joint missions are with our beloved. Like it is time for us each individually, whether you're a male or a female biological person, to, to build our own empires, to build our own kingdoms, queendoms, whatever the fuck you wanna call it. And, and I feel like that's where our focus needs to be. So, so in moving forward, you know, I, like I said, I was looking at where am I going? What is my path now? You know, I, I have surrendered that piece of myself that was holding on to the twin flame journey as a reason to be in mission, as a reason to, you know, become whatever it is I'm supposed to become, you know, whatever is in my blueprint to become. And in letting that go, that just shows that it is in the hands of the gods, the God, the gods, the universe, the source, and that I fully and completely trust in that process and that I don't need to hold on to it anymore. You know, there's, we always used to hate, if you guys remember when I used to do card readings all the time, the patience card would come up all the fucking time. And what I realized just recently is that it's not even about having patience or trusting in divine timing. It's knowing your truth and surrendering to that truth that you feel within you and letting it go, not needing to hold on to it because we know what we have been shown. And in releasing all of that, we can move forward. And since I started doing that, I started feeling more connected to myself, more connected to spirit, and more understanding of my own resistance that I was experiencing moving forward on my own through my journey. 
So I want to talk a little bit about that resistance um, that I that I went through and, and hopefully it will help you guys in working through your own resistance. So um, so about three years ago, you no, know, it was exactly three years ago, um, I had started my tantric training and became a certified Dakini or tantric priestess, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I worked with my Tantra studies for a while and I only would facilitate Tantric work with females. And that was because I felt this loyalty to my divine counterpart that I would be dishonoring him by doing Tantric work with men. And I also still had my own personal um, judgments about doing tantric work with men, um, the labels of sex worker and things like that, as well as my own wounds of my own sexual abuse and the traumas that I had gone through when I was younger. And all of these things played a part in like, I was like, okay, okay, God, I will accept doing tantric work with women. I can facilitate healing for women who have been sexually abused, so on and so forth. But I drew the line there. Again, I was very much afraid, and I'm gonna say afraid. I did not want to dishonor my beloved, my divine masculine. And I felt that doing this work would be dishonoring. Um, and quite honestly, I didn't want to touch another man, even in a healing way, doing Tantra. So again, that was something that I felt was very sacred um, between he and I. And it wasn't something, it wasn't an energy that I chose to share with anyone else, other than females who were here for healing solely. And over the time, you know, I've worked with women and I've done all of that stuff and I've had many men reach out to me over the last three years for tantric work. And what I've realized and what I found was, you know, I, I turned them away. I turned them away because, you know, I had always in the back of my head, my masculine, my judgments about doing this work and about me having to keep myself pure and sacred for my union. And I kind of swept aside the fact of the healing that this work brings to men and women. And, and honestly, I was getting a lot of guys who were reaching out and this was the best part. So you talk about law of attraction with all of this. So of course, because I was holding all of this resistance, because I was holding all of this judgment based on my my 3d programming i mean those of you who know me i don't i mean i think i've talked about it back in the day um you know i was raised italian catholic went to catholic school my entire life all the way through high school i had very very clear specific messages about sexuality and and what it looked like and what it should be like in this 3d world and although i had broken out of a lot of those paradigms and actually rebelled against a lot of it coming into the twin flame journey meeting my twin made me realize the sacredness of the energy that is shared in doing you know in having sex in doing tantric work and things like that and so in in doing holding on to those judgments the men that were reaching out to me were not men who truly were looking for healing, who were truly looking for learning and, and connecting that heart and body, that soul and, and energy to, to grow and learn from. And so I was getting men who literally wanted to, and you know, I'm gonna be quite blunt, who really just wanted you know, to get jerked off. And I was, you know, and of course I was screening these clients over the phone before I would meet with them and, and all of them, like none of them were purely wanting and truly interested in learning Tantra. And so that even made me more resistant to working with men. So this was my self-fulfilling prophecy. This was me attracting all of my fears, all of my judgment 
about the work, about myself, and reflected on, again, the sexual abuse wounds that I carried still from when I was younger. Um, so, so moving forward, a couple of days ago, um, I had gotten a message from one of my male friends who is very spiritual, super, super nice guy. And we've done a lot of work together, healing, facilitating for each other and, and activating and things like that. And we haven't done really tantric work, but we've done kind of pseudo tantric work. Um, you know, the, the edge, the breaking edges, the, the early steps of tantric work. Um, and it was crazy because he's also a massage therapist like myself. And he messaged me the other day and said, hey, you know, what are you up to? You know, if you have time coming up this week, you know, I could really use some body work and I'll give you body work in exchange. And, and literally the message sent all this icky feeling into my body of him doing body work on me. Now, mind you, I go to a male massage therapist and I have no issues with doing body work with him, but I know my connection with this other guy is very deep and very spiritual and that we do bring a very strong element of complete healing to each other. And I just almost felt it was going to be tantric work that he and I were going to do. And I responded to him and said, hey, you know, yeah, I'll do body work for you, you know, but I don't really, you know, I'm good right now. Like, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to exchange. It's fine. You know, whatever. And then I sat with the resistance and what it was. And again, that disloyalty came up for me. Um, and that I didn't want to touch another man in that way. And I didn't want to be touched by another man that way. And then I realized the blocks that I was putting before myself. Um, the fact that I had been feeling stuck was because I was refusing to answer my higher calling. And, and it reminded me of when I was guided to start Shamama. And I got, I've told you guys this story like probably a million times, but those of you who haven't heard it, um, I was guided to start Shamama Hunting Owl and start doing videos, right? And I was, you know, working with a shaman at the time and I had no intentions. I never wanted to do this YouTube stuff. I had no desire, nothing like that. And, um, and I was working with a shaman doing my own healing and learning about my the things that I could do, starting to unpack the essence and the healing and the things that I was powerful enough to do on my own. And he was teaching me. And in one of our sessions, Spirit guided him to give me the name Hunting Owl. And, he, and when he gave it to me, we laughed. I totally laughed it off. And he said, and I said, what does that mean? And he says, well, you're a shaman. And I said, no, I can't be a shaman. I'm a shamama. And that's where shamama hunting owl came from. Well, of course, now I had this name. And I'm like, okay, this is great, hysterical, very funny, very wise. I understand it all. What the fuck am I ever going to do with the name shamama hunting owl? And the tap at the door, the divine started knocking and said, you're going to start making YouTube videos. And I went, fuck that. For six weeks. I told spirit to fuck off, cried, had fits, said there was no way I was doing YouTube videos. Who the fuck was I? Who was going to listen to me? All of these insecurities kept coming up for me. And sure enough, my lucrative massage business that I was running at the time, little by little, one by one, clients started disappearing. And after six weeks, I had no clients left. And, and these were clients I had had for a while, you guys. Like, the divine took it away because I was refusing to answer my higher calling. And that resistance, that ego fucking mind that says, no, I know what's best for me. My ego knows what's best for me was losing a battle. So I then, after six weeks of fighting it, made my first YouTube video. Um, 
And literally, this was Monday morning now, this just this past Monday, um, this same experience happened to me. And I heard the call and I understood the resistance and I knew what I was fighting against and the ego was screaming like a motherfucker inside of me. You know, all the fears, all the insecurities, what does this look like? What does this mean? What will people think of me? All came up. And I have the luxury of having an amazing, beautiful, divine feminine who lives very close to me, who is also a Tantra teacher, healer, facilitator. And I reached out to her. I've never talked to her before. Um, we're friends on Facebook, you know, we've liked each other's posts here and there, but I've known about her. I've been guided. I've seen her. I love her energy. And I knew in that moment, she was the one I needed to reach out to, to help me bridge this gap, to help me move into these higher levels of first releasing my judgments, those 3D programs about doing this work. Um, secondly, about coming back into my power of claiming my own divine feminine sexuality and sensuality and being safe and feeling free and liberated in expressing that without having to think about dishonoring my beloved, you know, and, and moving forward, doing what I need to do for my spiritual path, for my mission. So this is what I've been going through. And, and I have been processing this and I have the luxury, like I said, of working with this beautiful, amazing woman. She is just fucking fantastic, you guys. Um, and she is local here in South Florida. And I don't wanna post her name because I don't know for sure if she's okay with it. I haven't asked for her permission. Um, but if I do get her permission um, after I put this video out and talk to her, I will put her information underneath uh, in the, the box under the video, okay? And um, anyway, so I, I have come to this place where I am ready to step into my new calling, my next steps, my next levels of healing related to where I am going on my mission and forward. And so my point of all of this, <laughs> a long way to get to where I'm going is so many of us, are being have been stagnant so many of us have been blocking our own way because of these fears these insecurities and these attachments to what we were holding on to you know we have to move forward for ourselves this journey is for us to empower us and not to worry about what anybody else is going to think, feel, or react to. Their, their issues are their issues. Their judgments about what we do is their judgments. That's their, I mean, their issue to deal with. It is not ours. Our higher calling is calling for us. And that doesn't mean that, it doesn't even mean necessarily that I'm supposed to be doing Tantra with men at this point. I really don't know what it means. It just means that I need to release the judgments related that 3d stereotype programming related to doing this work and expanding the type of work i do with women because there's other areas of of tantra work and and bdsm work that i am very very drawn to and interested in um exploring so i realize that this is the next part. How can I be complete? How can I help people be complete and whole if I myself am holding myself back from, you know, letting my full light shine, okay? And that includes being able to be a healthy, healed and whole, well-functioning, well-rounded, sexual divine sensual divine feminine who can not have those fears from my past sexual abuse that distrust of the masculine and fully embracing all that i am and sharing that 
Now that doesn't mean randomly sharing that. That doesn't mean I'm gonna go hooking up with this one and that one because again, sexual energy is very, very sacred. You know, we need to be selective as to who we share our energy with. It's always an exchange and we do, as the divine feminine, take on the masculine's energy. You know, if they plant their seed in us, they are implanting every emotion, every fear, every feeling that they have in that moment into our womb space. And that is a sacred space. So again, it's time for us to step up. Whatever your mission is. So, so at the same time that all of this is going on for me, one of my very dear friends who um, is trying to find her way, her mission, has been, you know, starting to do, wanting to do, got her license <clears throat> or certification to do fitness and personal training. And she has had significant issues with um, self-love of her body and feeling worthy enough and good enough. Like, again, same shit I went through. Who's going to listen to me, you know? Who's going to train with me? This is, this is what she has been going through. I don't look like most of the personal trainers. I'm not all buff and ripped and da 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 And she is facing the same resistance about moving forward. And we're working all through. And this is happening simultaneously while I am going through my stuff. And, and so there is this, this time that we are being given right now, you know, um, to, to really look at our resistance, our fears, that egoic mind that takes control over us, that stops us from doing things. And trust me, you guys, I didn't realize that I was holding on to these 3D programs, to this um, negative judgment of sex work, and, and, and then of course, you know, I get, you know, I get Mary Magdalene comes in and she calms my soul and she reminds me, this is what we've done. We are the initiates. We are the ones that bring healing. And through this sacred tantric work, this is where the healing comes from. This is what lights the grid. And, and so I willingly step into whatever role it is that spirit has for me at this point. I'm letting go. I'm releasing the resistance. Does that mean I meant to work with men? I don't know yet. I honestly don't know what it looks like yet other than me getting to a point where I can comfortably, safely and securely reprogram my conscious my consciousness on what the stereotypes are and all of the things that I have been holding on to so I want you guys to take this and you know really sit with where you're at in your journey and what is it that you're afraid to do because here's the thing our divine blueprint we came here with a purpose we chose before we jumped out of that spiritual airplane, okay? Right before we jumped into these physical bodies, we, there was a little job list, okay? And we checked off the jobs and the life experiences that we wanted to have. And those are our soul blueprint. That is what we are here to do. And no matter what we do, no matter how hard we fight it, we are going to keep getting blocked and blocked and blocked at every turn until we face whatever it is that's keeping us from doing what we came here to do. Spirit will continually keep putting tower moment after block after tower moment in front of us until we awaken, until we open our eyes to see what it is that our next step is. So you guys, I hope that this was very helpful for you all. Um, I thank you always for your time, for your support, for your love, for being here, for supporting me. And for those of you on Patreon, I will be doing, and or those of you who want to join Patreon, I will be doing a card reading 
um, probably after this video um, and posting it shortly to do a reading of what we're dealing with this week with the energies. I know we have Mars going retrograde into Aries, which is going to be a lot of fire um, and a lot of intensity for us. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe over at Patreon. And that's it, you guys. I am sending you all so much love and light. Gratitude and blessings, always beautiful souls. I love you all, and we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.